the women were arguing. The loan officer was due to arrive in a few hours, and they were still missing 200 rupees. Rather, Farah and her 200 rupees were missing. The other four women of their loan group had convened, as they did every Tuesday, to aggregate their respective funds. Where is she? Geetha asked. No one answered. Instead, the women pieced their respective Farah sightings into a jigsaw of gossip that, to Geetha's ears at least, failed to align. Saloni, a woman whose capacity for food was exceeded only by her capacity for venom, goaded most of the conversation. This isn't the first time, Priya said, and you know it won't be the last, Saloni finished. When Preeti mentioned she was fairly certain she'd seen Farah buying hashish, Geetha felt it best to nudge them to more prosaic matters. Varun Bhai is not going to like this. Well, now we know where her money's going, Priya said. Some devout Muslim, Saloni sniffed, the gesture dainty for a woman of her size. Lately, she'd been attempting to rebrand her weight as evidence of her community status. Compounded with her preternatural talent for bullying, this guy's worked on the women. But Geetha had known Saloni and her family since childhood, when she ruled the playground rather than their loan group, and could accurately attribute her heft to genetics betraying her in her 30th year, rather than any posh mark of affluence. Ironic, considering Saloni had spent her first 19 years perpetually malnourished, thin as paper, and just as prone to cut. She'd married well, curving into a stunning woman who'd reclaimed her slim figure after her firstborn, but hadn't managed the same after the second. Geetha listened to their rumors, observed how the women contributed and piled on with clinical interest. This must have been the way they'd whispered about her after Ramesh left, a fallen woman mixed with dirt. Then shushing each other when she approached, their lips peeling into sympathetic smiles as sincere as political promises. But now, five years after her husband's disappearance, Geetha found herself within the fold rather than shunned, thanks to Farah's absence. It was a dubious honor. Her fingers toyed with her ear. When she used to wear earrings, she would often check to make sure the backs were secure. The sharp but benign prick of the stud against her thumb had been reassuring. The habit lingered, even after Ramesh vanished and she'd stopped wearing jewelry altogether. No nose ring, no bangles, no earrings. Tired of the gossip, she interrupted the women's musings on Farah's defection. If each of us puts in another 50, we can still give Varunpai the full amount. That got their attention. The room quieted. Geetha heard the feeble hum of her fan stirring the air. The flywheel's tight circles oscillated like a tiny hula hoop. The blades were ornamental. The heat remained thick and unforgiving. The fan hung from a strong cord Ramesh had tied in their old house. It had been early in their marriage, so when he'd stumbled on the ladder, it had been okay to laugh. He'd even joined her. Rage hadn't found Ramesh until their second year together, after her parents passed away. When she'd been forced to move into this smaller home, she tied the cord herself. A lizard darted up the wall in a diagonal before hiding in the lintel's shadow. Geetha's mother used to tell her not to be afraid, that they brought good luck. She itched to see it plop from the dark pocket onto one of the women, preferably Saloni, who was terrified of all animals except, inexplicably, spiders. The other two, sisters Priya and Preeti, were neither kind nor cruel, but they deferred to their leader. Geetha could sympathize, having herself once served under Saloni. No way, Saloni said. It's Farah's problem. Geetha stared at the dark wall, 
willing the lizard to be a good sport. Nothing. It's our problem, she snapped. If we default, Varun Bhai won't give us another loan next year. The women were somber. Everyone knew the center extended loans to groups, not individuals. Then began a communal metamorphosis from fishwives to martyrs. The women spilled their excuses onto each other, all pushy contestants in a competition with no judge to rule as to who was the most aggrieved party. I have to buy my kids' school books. They keep getting more expensive. Saloni's lips compressed. But it's such a gift to be a mother. We just bought another buffalo. My kids guzzle so much milk. I keep telling them if you are thirsty, drink water. Preeti coughed. But still, they bring me joy. My boy needs medicine for his ear infection. He cries all the time. Priya hurried to add. But there's no better blessing than a son. Joys of motherhood, they murmured. Such a privilege, nah? No?